Hello, welcome to today's video, which is part two of my mini series showing how I touch up my Japanese straight perm. If you haven't seen part one, it should probably be linked here or somewhere like that, where I'll be showing how I get my hair ready the week before a touch up. Today's video, I'm going to be showing my actual touch up process. This is after the touch up is complete, you will see before and you will see how I got to this point. I have an updated skincare routine video plan. If there's any more comments or requests, feel free to leave them down below. So today I'm going to be touching up my straight perm. I have a good amount of new growth. It's been about eight weeks, but my hair grows so rapidly that it's already an inch or slightly over an inch in some areas. I'm going to be touching up with the Shiseido Crystallizing Straight. This is like the super strength pretty much. So with this one, that's for like very resistant to resistant hair. I don't have to process it for long. And it works on my hair as low porosity hair. When something says it's for resistant hair, don't think of it as thick hair. Think of it as low porosity hair. If you have normal porosity hair, you should only be using the normal strength. And if you have high porosity hair, like hair that dries out very easily, you should be using the mildest version. So that's why typically milder solutions are for like previously chemically treated hair or just naturally super dry hair. My hair is naturally resistant to the cuticle opening. So that's why I'm using the very resistant. Normally before wash day, I would use my hair oils, but since today is the day that I'm going to be touching up my hair, I don't want anything stimulating on my scalp because that can increase sensitivity. So I'm just going to take some rose water and a hair mask, detangle and massage my hair, and then wash my hair three times to do the straight perm. So first I'm going to take my hair and just spray it to help start the detangling process. I'm using the conditioner because there won't be any conditioning steps once I begin. I'm going in with the Misha Damage Hair Therapy Treatment and I'm just going to focus it all over my hair. So my ends, my roots give a really good massage and ensure that all of my shed hair is out before I start, start processing my hair. So now I'm taking my comb and working my way from the bottom to the top. Okay, so this is what my hair is looking like thoroughly detangled. I always get excited when it's time to touch it up to see how much of a difference there's going to be in length. I'm gonna hop in the shower and shampoo my hair three times. And then when I come out, that's when I'll start on the actual touch up process. And I'll kind of be taking you through each step. I'll show you what shampoo I'm gonna use. You've already seen which chemical I'm going to be using. And then I'll show you the serum that I use as a heat protector. I'm going to be using this is the Kerasis Royal Propolis Shampoo. This is a really nice spa quality shampoo. I got it at Marshalls, but it's from Korea. For a heat protectant, I'm just going to be using the Giovanni Frisbee Gone. This is my all-time favorite. I've used this for 10 years now, and it's honestly one of the best affordable salon quality hair serums. Okay, I'm back with my hair washed three times. This is what it's looking like. And now I'm going to start the touch up process. The first step is to take the first step and put it in a bowl so that I can spread it on my roots. This little heart shaped mirror that has like zoom and regular mode so that I can see what I'm doing. As you can see, it's already softening. 
up a lot and I only have about 10 minutes of processing left. If your skin is super sensitive, make sure you're using gloves. I'm just gonna go back through with my mirror and ensure that I've gotten all this hair. If your bathroom has like an exhaust, I suggest doing it there. The bathroom here doesn't have an exhaust, so the best thing to do is to do this in my room because I can get some good ventilation to it. I'll check back in after I rinse this out. This is what my hair looks like before rinsing it out. I'm gonna run and rinse it out. Okay, after rinsing my hair thoroughly with lukewarm water, this is what it's looking like. To tangle it a little bit, but basically it is straight. And as you can see, it is straight. As straight as it is now, it'll get even straighter after I blow dry it and flat iron it and go on to the next step. So this is, this is what my hair is looking like. And I'm going to go on to the next step which is blow drying, flat ironing, and then neutralizing. Okay, this is what my hair is looking like after blow drying it. Now it's time for me to flat iron it and then neutralize it. Going over my roots like twice and that's it. So I'm gonna do that until I'm completely done, show you and then neutralize. Okay, now that I'm done flat my hair, this is what it looks like. It is perfectly smooth and I gained a little bit of length. Now I'm just going to neutralize it and process this neutralizing step for two to three minutes. Make sure to apply an ample amount from the roots to tips because chances are when I rinsed out my hair, it got on the ends too. So I'm gonna put this on and do the full three-ish minutes and then rinse it out. I gotta hurry up and rinse it out. This time I'll be using the Giovanni Frisbee Gone. So I'm gonna take like just a pump. I just wanna make sure it has a little bit of heat protectant as I straighten it the last time. This is what my hair looks like completely detangled, completely wet after touching it up. It's all the same texture. I finally finished doing my hair. This is what it's looking like. Okay. In the meantime, I just have to make sure I don't get my hair wet or get any weird creases in it for the next 48 to 36 hours. I like to go at least 36 hours to ensure that it's perfect. So I'm not going to clip it up. I'm not going to put it behind my ears and I'll just tie it up at night. 